And that's how I found myself on this train. On Ratchet's trail. The rest you know. My identity is easily checked with the Berkshire police. Thank you for your detailed account, Mademoiselle Locke. In addition to giving us crucial details of the investigation, you have made it clear that there are many who might wish to see Ratchet dead. I know you are innocent. Your forthright testimony and your movements, or lack of them, last night, eliminate you from our list of suspects. I agree, without a doubt. Another detective will be great help to the investigation. Book. Although my friend certainly does not need any help. You are too kind. Thank you for believing me. I'd like to help in any way I can. Do not worry, Mademoiselle Locke. Already I see things more clearly. It's obvious whoever drugged you was trying to derail your investigation. You mean the person who did this to me is Ratchet's killer? Both Monsieur Michel and Fraulein Schmidt had the means and opportunity to drug you. While you get your strength back, I intend to interview them. Excellent idea, my friend. All this excitement has whetted my appetite. I'm sure Mademoiselle Locke won't say no to a good, invigorating meal. What? No. I want to hear what the conductor and Fräulein Schmidt have to say for themselves. It is my duty to ensure the well-being of the passengers. If Dr. Constantine has no objection, I will escort you to the restaurant car. On the contrary, some food will do her the greatest good. Well, I'm still a little shaky. Mr. Poirot, will you please keep me informed about what you learn? You may be certain of it. All that snow. Are you familiar with the concept of entropy, Monsieur McQueen? Oh, Mr. Poirot, I didn't see you. Entropy? Randomness in a system or something? Yes, unpredictability. Even the best laid plans can go astray, thanks to something as simple as... An unexpected passenger? Perhaps, or snow. Good evening, Fräulein Schmidt. May I disturb you for a moment? You asked so politely, mein Herr, but I do not think I have a choice. I wanted to let you know that your roommate, Mademoiselle Locke, is awake. Ah, yes. I'm glad to hear that. I was worried about her. Did she tell you what had happened to her? Unfortunately, she doesn't remember much, but we found a residue of a sleeping pill in her cup of tea. Since you two were alone together in your room when she drank it, who else but you could have dragged her? Must I point out I do not make the tea on this train? You should question the conductor or the kitchen staff. Mademoiselle Locke could have died. Whoever drugged her must not feel any empathy for their fellow human beings, given the dose that Mademoiselle Locke ingested. She was close to death. Oh, my God. What did I do? I didn't want to hurt her. Just have her sleep for a few hours while we had time. We? Time for what? Time for what, Madame Schmidt? You think I feel nothing? Nothing? That poor, poor little girl. Indeed, that poor, poor little girl. Fräulein Schmidt is somehow connected to the Armstrong case. Et voilà. 
Fräulein Schmidt, I have a certain reputation for sniffing out... I am not a murderer! Forgive me, but I was going to say brilliant chefs. You were the Armstrong family's cook, were you not? The... Yes. I was the cook of that lovely, lovely family. I'm sorry, but I must ask you to give me some time to... to collect myself. It wasn't supposed to be like this, my darling, my poor darling child. I will give you that time, Fräulein. You have given me much more in exchange. I must check in with my other suspects to make certain I have all the pieces of the puzzle in my possession. Can I get you something, Monsieur Poirot? Everyone is so tense. Uh, an aperitif soon, Monsieur Fauché, with pleasure, when the matter is resolved. Another delightful trophy for my collection. Another golden moustache to treasure. Not now! Not now! I have a dinner to prepare. Would you interrupt Michelangelo or Da Vinci? Good evening, Michel. Am I bothering you? You seem stressed. With everything that's going on, I must admit, it's difficult to be relaxed. Of course, I understand. Especially since we know that Detective Locke's tea was drugged before it was served to her. Detective? Come now, Michel. Surely you would have taken the opportunity to search her things and found her badge. Luckily, she woke up and was finally able to tell us her story. Otaru boiled the water, Jean made the tea. I just brought it. So it could have been any of this stuff. Your defense is to accuse others? You have a network connection? No, unfortunately. It's just an automatic reminder to pay my rent. I always forget and my landlord complains. Pierre Michel had to be involved in the murder. The drugged tea, his post at the end of the hall, and now I know why I know more than one of those people on the screen. Nice. Good. Fantastic. My little gray cells did not let me down. You are the father of Suzanne Moreau. Daisy Armstrong's nanny. My condolences on the death of your wife. What? But I... My wife... Enough lies. Suzanne does not bear your name? No. Suzanne's mother and I were divorced. Suzanne kept her mother's name. My most sincere condolences, Monsieur Michel, on the deaths of Suzanne and your wife. This job... I love them. But I was never there for them. Then, a year after the divorce, Solange became ill. Suzanne took her to this special hospital in the U.S. Got that job as Daisy's nanny. I understand your pain. And the reason that led you to drug Detective Locke. 
we really can't hide anything from you, can we? Many have been foolish enough to try and keep the truth from Hercule Poirot. Yes, I admit, I drug the tea. But it was only to keep her quiet, until we... I could... But she reacted so much to the sleeping pills. She was lucky, as are you, that she didn't die. To be frank, there is one more thing that puzzled me. But I think I understand now. Monsieur Hardman was Suzanne's fiancé. Huh. I have the impression my whole life to you is an open book. Yes, Cyrus was my daughter's fiancé. I almost consider Cyrus as my own son. Of course, much more is clear now. I have been patient long enough. It is time to go and see what all the commotion is next door. Monsieur Hardman, excellent. The gods who watch over detectives must have trapped you here. Why didn't they watch over me? I'm a detective too. I, um, I was talking to Michelle about a, a leaky faucet, and I wanted to go out, but, um, you showed up. No need to invent some preposterous story. But really, I... Michelle has told me everything. You are the fiancé of Suzanne Moreau, his daughter. Oh. I see. Surely this is not a big surprise to you. No. Suzanne was the only woman I ever loved. And I failed her. We got into a spat. It was nothing. But I was too proud to apologize. We weren't speaking at all. Suzanne never really cared for that guy Noah. She would have forgiven me. If only... If only... If only... A common refrain between lovers who quarrel. Obviously, Pierre Michel and Fräulein Schmidt both drugged Detective Locke's tea, causing the overdose. No wonder she had so much trouble waking up. Time to report my findings to her and Book. You can never have too many of these. I wonder if our master chef gets his recipes from a game. So, my friend, tell me, you have something new? Mademoiselle Locke, I know who drugged you. Fräulein Schmidt and our conductor Pierre Michel both admitted putting sleeping pills into your tea. This explains your overdose. They are relieved you are recovering. Michel drugged a passenger? On behalf of the company. I offer my apologies to you, Mademoiselle Luck. Michel will answer for this outrage. Both of them? I was pretty sure about Fräulein Schmidt, but I admit that I did not suspect the conductor. I have uh, uncovered multiple connections with the Armstrong case. Pierre Michel is the father of Suzanne Moreau, Little Daisy's nanny, and Monsieur Hardman was Suzanne's fiancé. As for Hildegard Schmidt, she was the cook of the Armstrong family. What a coincidence, don't you think? But it's incredible! What are the odds that so many people linked to that tragic affair ended up on the same train? About the same as you winning the lottery, my friend. I wasn't the officer who interviewed Fräulein Schmidt back then. So she couldn't recognize me here on the train. How could they know who I was? There were other passengers who might have. 
Or she may have seen you when you visited the Armstrong home. It is now clear to me that some of the clues to this elaborate plot were staged for my benefit. Et voilà. Some clues and information collected so far could lead to a hypothesis. The murderer boarded the train in Vinkovsky, killed Rachet, and then left the train immediately. How did you come to that possibility? Monsieur Hardman told me about a short man with a high-pitched voice who threatened Rachet. Imagine for a moment that this man, wearing a wagon lee conductor's jacket, killed him while Michel was on the platform at Vinkovsky. This murderer then hid the conductor's jacket in Detective Locke's room, then fled before the train left. Why choose Detective Locke's room? Why, indeed. Let me re-explain from the beginning. That was easy. Mon Dieu! Oui! That must be it! Everything fits so well! It fits too well, my friend. Other clues lead to a second hypothesis, much more plausible. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. So, we have multiple murderers, all related to the Armstrong case. The murderer from Vinkovsky was a fabrication to turn suspicion away from those on the train. They expected the investigation to be led by some small-town official who could easily be misled. Um, Mr. Poirot? <laughs> Detective Locke, forgive me. You are an obvious exception. You tracked Ratchet with the tenacity of a bloodhound. Unfortunately for the killers, they not only had you to deal with, but now they had, and I say this with all modesty, the world's greatest detective, Hercule Poirot, dropped into the midst of their meticulous planning. Multiple murderers? Multiple detectives? Poirot, please take pity on me. Who is linked to this case, and who is not? My poor friend, I have gone speeding out of the station without you. I will continue. No, 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 not good. I must admit I'm not right this time. That's the right answer. Fraulein Schmidt, Pierre Michel, Monsieur Hardman, and Monsieur McQueen are all linked to the Armstrong case. I also know that Sonia Armstrong's sister and godmother, Countess Andreni and Princess Dragomirov, are on this train. And finally, Detective Locke discovered that Mr. Foscarelli was the Armstrong chauffeur. If we add Detective Locke and Ratchet, of the 12 passengers in that coach. 
nine have a connection with the Armstrong case. What next, Poirot? Or should I say, who next? It is time to summon everyone. Everyone? Even Dr. Constantine? The train crew other than Michel? Dr. Constantine, yes. I will need him. But we don't want the others as witnesses. I will see that their duties keep them occupied elsewhere. Excellent. I have always thought this moment in a case is much like Rodin unveiling the thinker before a captivated audience. A work of art. Have you not felt that way, detective? No, Mr. Poirot. I'm happy just to slap the cuffs on him. Well, there is some artistry in that as well, I suppose. Where would you like the unveiling, Poirot? Uh, the lounge? Perfect. Then I will gather all the passengers in the lounge. 